Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode, guys, on these key elements that you're going to need and going to help you out in your day-to-day EMS goings-on. So today, we're going to continue on with our geriatrics. We're actually going to finish this up today, so this is going to be a little bit longer than usual. But of course, I want to talk about first why this stuff is important, right? I always say that this is important. It's not just because of your exams and your recertification exams, things like that. It's also to give you that key information to just pass your exams and also to build your knowledge base. I'm very big on that, very big on increasing your knowledge every day in EMS so you can make better clinical decisions, do your reports better, interact better better with other healthcare professionals. So it kind of all encompasses it. Right, so it's not just for exams, um, and I'm hoping that this builds your knowledge base and, and encourages you to go ahead and get more information on these topics if you're unfamiliar with them and you want to learn more and get become better on these individual topics. Okay, so let's get into this, guys. Again, we're going to finish up geriatrics today. Okay, um, ended last time with the general assessment, but I want to talk a little bit now about the physical exam. Okay. Elderly, a little more trickier, okay? You should treat them like a trauma exam if possible, okay? Because they might not know or be able to tell you what's going on with them, especially patients who have severe dementia, Alzheimer's, things like that, right? Do your complete head-to-toe on these patients, okay? Um, When you're talking about things like general management of these patients, it's a little trickier for for elderly patients. You've got to kind of keep in mind certain elements that that you want to look out for, okay? Things like your airway. You want to do your basic airway assessment, but also watch out for denters. Watch out for other airway obstructions that might be going on. A lot of times, elderly people don't necessarily chew all their food. They might have something left in there that you might not see or have hand, especially if they had a syncopal episode or maybe passed out for some reason, something like that, right? So keep that in mind. Look out for circulation, Watch out with fluid. Don't give them too much because a lot of these patients might be on, 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 uh, you know, uh, 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 water pills and they might have some sort of CHF issue going on. So be cautious when you're giving uh, fluids and transportation. Okay, try to ask them to help you when you're moving them to a stair chair, to a stretcher, things like that. Okay, keep in mind, guys, these are older, older people. Okay, so they have fragile bones, fragile skin, okay, things like that. So let them help you if they can, all right, and that's going to make them more comfortable and also kind of help them with their dignity a little bit too, okay, because they don't necessarily want you helping them every step of the way. So other thing that you want to think about, guys, is talking about the specific systems, okay, things like respiratory complaints, watch out for the pneumonia, watch out for that uh, pulmonary edema, watch out for COPD, Okay, the cardiovascular, again, we talked about CHF already, right? That's something that's very big with elderly patients. What medications are there there on, okay, that are cardiovascular in nature? Okay, what type of medications might give them orthostatic sort of changes, all right? And what about the nervous system? Keep in mind, a lot of them are, are very susceptible to be having a stroke or a TIA, okay? Try to find out when did it, when did it happen, right? That's a very important thing for us nowadays, right? We can make a very big... Um, impact on patients that are having an acute stroke. So time is a good information to get. What was the onset? Okay, know your stroke scale. Maybe you use the Cincinnati stroke scale where you are. Okay, some people use that fast uh, stroke assessment. Okay, Um, and keep in mind, you've got your basic stuff, your facial droop, your on drift, your slurred speech, but there's other things to look at as well. Okay, so look into more of that stroke stuff. I just sent an email about that out the other day talking about stroke and giving some great resources over on the site at emssco.com on how you can get some more information and really build your knowledge base on neuro- neurological problems that go on with your patients. Um, endocrine systems. Keep in mind, guys, diabetes, especially for the geriatric population, about 20% of them are going to actually have it. Okay, and many times you know, you'd be surprised too. A lot of uh, pediatric, I'm sorry, geriatric diabetics also have COPD. All right, so keep in mind about that big picture. Okay, to, you know, again, we go back to them not being able to tell you much. So keep in mind, you got to have to do a little bit more research, the more questions asking, then you might actually 
uh, be used to, okay? Their GI symptoms. What symptoms can can be going on here, guys? You can get your usual nausea, your, your, your vomiting, okay? But look out for bowel obstructions, very common with elderly patients. GI bleeds, hiatal hernias, okay? And also keep in mind that sometimes these symptoms for GI tract issues or, or pretty much any symptoms that your elderly patient might have can also be secondary to other issues, Okay, sometimes patients might be weak, a little altered, and what's going on? They've got maybe a urinary tract infection, something like that going on. Guys, I'm going to wrap some of this stuff up here, guys, okay? But let's talk about the CNS a little bit more before we get into some other special considerations, okay? When we talk about elderly, again, think about that CNS, that central nervous system, all right? Ask about changes in their mental status and what their normal or baseline is, especially with those dementia and Alzheimer's patients, okay? Look out for those strokes, those TIAs, the delirium. Is it a quick onset? Is it caused by infection? Maybe an electrolyte imbalance, maybe a fever, medications, okay? And it can even be reversible. All right, dementia. Dementia, keep in mind, is that progressive loss of intellectual function, okay? And Alzheimer's is that progressive loss of cognitive function, okay? Very similar, all right, to a point, but you have to kind of keep in mind that there is a slight difference in the two. And then we talk about Parkinson's disease, guys, and this is that degeneration of the basal ganglia, okay, in the brain, and that causes tremors, okay, especially tremors at rest, sluggish movement, and even muscle rigidity. So all stuff to keep in mind, guys, and this isn't everything when it comes to, to the central nervous system. Again, this is the key elements that you'll see on your exams and key elements that I think you can take away with you when it comes to your patient assessment and when you're evaluating your patients out there in the field and deciding on proper transport and treatment um, suggestions for the patient and their family, okay? So keep all that stuff, guys. And again, remember, like I said in the very beginning here, Ask about those changes in mental status, okay? What's the normal What's the normal mental status for that patient? Especially when you get those patients that are in nursing homes, that are on home care, things like that, okay? Guys, I want to wrap it up again, talk about some of the special considerations here. Um, toxicology, all right? A lot of times, most of these elderly patients will be on four to five prescriptions on average. Think about those drug interactions. Think about them being non-compliant. Think about side effects and talking about that as well, even substance abuse, okay? They can actually take more either accidentally or intentionally, especially if you talk about stress, depression, confusion, they're falling, things like that. And environmental emergencies, guys. Keep in mind, geriatric patients are very sensitive to changes in temperature, all right? Um, trauma. Think about how easy it is for them to break their bone, especially long bones, their pelvis, their hip, okay? And come to osteoporosis, it makes it very, very easy for that to happen. And again, talk about cardiac again, all right? The function and the output, cardiac function, cardiac output is already reduced, okay? So shock, blood loss can have a much more profound effect on perfusion on your geriatric patients. Um, head injuries. All right, keep in mind, the brain gets a little smaller as you get older. That leaves more room for it to be bouncing around. All right, so something to think about there. Um, uh, talk about, uh, how about immobilization? We don't do a lot of long spine board uh, and collar anymore these days, guys. Okay, but you might think about it. Sometimes you have to move them on a board or something like that. Not always the best for geriatric patients. It can be almost impossible sometimes, depending upon how they present to you. And it can also be traumatic to them, okay? So watch their backs and their necks if you do have to use a long board or a collar on these patients. Um, guys, uh, some other things you want to think about, guys. I talked about head injuries. But one thing to keep in mind, we have uh, you know calls to patients, frequent calls that we deal with in EMS. Um, uh, neglect and abuse, right? Uh, think about when you've got to go back to the same house a lot or maybe the same patient a lot in a nursing facility, okay, those frequent calls to, to us to come out there. Do they have multiple injuries and different stages of healing, um, lack of food, clothing, shelter, lack of proper medications, hygiene, okay? It's much. It's it's very similar to you talk about child abuse, but keep in mind that there can be elderly abuse as well. All right, so 
don't just brush it off. If you start seeing sort of a pattern, maybe ring some bells in your head. They might have to get other agencies involved, you know, adult protective services or whatever it might be in your area that you might have to contact to maybe look a little bit, little bit further into this this patient if you keep getting them over and over again with various injuries things like that and they don't have good hygiene and stuff like that so something to keep in mind like i mentioned before don't forget the brain and the head injuries it shrinks if they're on blood thinners that can be an issue as well okay so an elderly person hitting their head can be much more serious than let's say a younger person that might bump their head on something all right start to think about guys like i said these are key elements not everything you're going to have to know to take care of these patients. I'm hoping that this sort of rings bells for you and gets you going and thinking about what you need to do as a EMS provider for these patients, okay? And, you know, maybe cracking open that textbook, doing some research online, using a resource online, maybe something like turbomedic.com, okay, to help you uh, know more about these types of patients and these, this, this type of uh, subject matter. Okay, guys, engage with me online. I really appreciate seeing you in my social media channels. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at EMS Safe on both of those. Uh, Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. I'd love to see you in either one of those, any of those channels or all those channels and see what I have going on all those channels. I do something a little bit different on each of those channels to help engage and get your thoughts and your your, your ideas of what's going on in EMS. Um, Finally, guys, I mentioned earlier, emsseo.com. If you're, you want to get some more knowledge, you want to build your knowledge base, go check out the site. Again, it's emsseo.com. The SEO stands for Success, Education, and Opportunity. Okay, get your exams help there. Get some study help there. Increase your knowledge. All right, a lot of stuff there is free. There's some low-cost resources as well, and they're all geared to really drill home and get you knowing the content that you need to know to be a great EMS professional. And something I always try to say these days, guys, is to be good at EMS so you can be great for your patients. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, content, contact me at contact.emsofficehours.com. Give me your thoughts and, and, and uh, uh, feedback on this episode. Let me know what you might want to see here on the Monday Minutes, and I can break away from these quick study tips and maybe do a session on something that you want to see that you feel is important to EMS. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, Jim Hoffman for EMS SCO and EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.